Hi, uh, Scott here from the Clex CMS team. Uh, so we're working from home at the moment, so I wanted to give a bit of a, a demo of how I personally go about working from home. Uh, so I've got a Windows computer. So normal stuff we do in our line of work, like um, SSH and uh, VNC connections and the like aren't available by default on Windows. Uh, what I do is use a virtual machine. So I run a Linux desktop on my Windows desktop. Um, so if we, if we go and take a look at that. So here we are in my uh, virtual machine. So this is basically if I exit this this is a window running inside my windows computer uh, that runs linux and we can full screen and i'm in a basically in a linux desktop without having to reformat my computer and reinstall new things um so yeah we've got like terminal access uh guardy's offline for maintenance at the moment so i'm not able to log into that but um, if it was online I could I could log on to my work computer if I go SSH Wales Nix it's my own computer and I can log on to my computer back at the university and work on that um, so let's show you how to set up something like this this is a program called VirtualBox. Um, it's what's used to run those uh, virtual Linux desktops. Um, I'll put a link for where to get this from down below. But basically you install it on your Windows machine and it allows you to run uh, virtual computers within your own computer. Um, you don't need a massive amount of resources to do this. So this computer I'm running on at the moment is well, probably eight or so years old, um, but it does have a decent amount of memory. That's one thing you might uh, need. So let's go and try and uh, create a virtual desktop. So we're going to go and look through and say new machine. Um, we're calling this Demo Linux. Obviously call it what, whatever you want. And you can say what type of operating system it's going to be. We're going to do a 64 Ubuntu. So I think that just changes the icon there. You can have whatever icon you want. Where you want the files to store, be stored, obviously you'll want to Bit of space if you're if you're going to be working on things. Um, memory size, you want a decent amount of memory, like I said before. Let's say eight gigabytes. I've got sixteen gigabytes on this computer, and we can say create a virtual hard disk. That's where all of your Linux files will be uh, created. Let's create that now. Um, so we're creating a virtual hard disk, let's say, let's say 20 gigabytes should be a reasonable number if you're not doing massive amounts of data analysis. So if you're mostly just connecting to NCI or whatever, um, that'll be good. Uh, storage on physical hard disk, it's probably a good idea to have dynamically allocated. So it'll only create on your Windows machine the file, you, the file size you're actually using in your virtual hard disk. Um, otherwise, you're just creating a 20 gigabyte file which contains mostly nothing. A uh, file type can be the default. I don't think it particularly matters. And there we go. We've got our demo Linux. Uh, so we can start this up and see what happens. So when we start it up, oops. You get this window saying we need a startup disk. So this is this will be your disk that has Linux on it or a .iso file. Uh, let's see if we can find one. 
So I've downloaded, again I'll put the link down below, but I've downloaded this Linux Mint ISO. So this is basically in the install disk for a version of Linux called Mint, uh, which is like a low resource uh, version of Linux. We want a low resource uh, because I'm running on a reasonably old computer, uh, so we don't want it to be too slow. So there we go, we've got our .iso file selected. Say start. So we've basically popped in a virtual CD. And here we go, we can start in Linux Mint. So we can just start as a virtual um, computer, boot from the local hard drive. Let's say start Linux Mint. And it'll start running. Uh, so it might either start running as a uh, on live CD, so it might just start up in Linux automatically for you, or some variants of Linux will want to install it. Uh, we're probably going to want to install it anyway, just so we don't have to manually add in that disk every time we try and start up the virtual machine. And it's going to take a little bit of time to boot up. So a short time later, we've got our we've got our live CD booted up. Um, we can see this is still just in a little window. We can go and full screen it if we want, but for now we'll just leave it in a window. Um, so we can work with it just fine like this, uh, or but files we create may not be saved. So you might want to go in and install the, the operating system, and then we'll have everything installed persistently in our virtual machine. So just, this is sort of modeled after a Windows type desktop, so. Yeah, we'll just go in and go through. We'll say English. You can obviously choose your language of choice. And we'll just go through answering all of the questions to install it. Um, I've got a US type keyboard, so we'll just stick with that. You can detect it automatically if you've got like a UK keyboard or some other type of keyboard. Choose it here. Uh, you can install graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. Since we're running on a virtual machine, uh, we probably won't need any of that. So I'm just going to leave it just to keep things small. Um, do, do, do. Erase and install sounds good. So we've created a new virtual hard drive. So this is only going to affect our virtual hard drive. This isn't going to affect our Windows machine. So we're pretty safe to do that. Um, we're not going to bother with these. And we're going to say install now. So it's going to say we're going to format um, our hard disk, our virtual hard disk. Say continue. So Doing the formatting and stuff might take a little bit of time. Uh, choosing a time zone. It's detected us as Melbourne, which is pretty good. Uh, you can name things. I'll say Scott. Uh, your computer's name, whatever you want it to be. Um, choose a password. Uh, whatever you want it to be, and continue. So now it's going through the install process, and again, this might take a little bit of time. Um, the download uh, .iso file is about two gigabytes, so you can expect it to be about uh, copying about two gigabytes of data. Um, so yeah, let this install. 
and we'll come back once it's actually been installed. Okay, we're back. So as you can see, it's saying the installation is complete. Um, let's restart and see what comes up. So now when it restarts, rather than starting up from the CD, it should start up from its actually installed um, stuff. So it says to remove the installation media. So what we can do is go to our virtual devices up here. And in our virtual device, uh, should be removed. Let's press enter. And we're rebooting. And we're coming back up. So we should get up our new virtual Linux desktop soon. There we go. Still thinking a little, as you can see by the cursor. And from here, we should be able to start up a terminal. Your Firefox, and then we're basically in control of our own uh, virtual desktop here. Uh, so you can do things like install a new program. If I wanted to install Vim, I'd do sudo install. Oh, sudo. Oops. Let's come up with some first steps. sudo apt install for mint so mint is basically ubuntu uh, just a lower resource version apt install vim and put your password in and then it's going to go ahead and install stuff for us uh, so from here you'll be able to log on to nci um, and with using SSH and yeah, you get to work. So hopefully that's been helpful as a demonstration on how to install a virtual desktop on a Windows computer.